Hi everyone, welcome to this introductory tutorial that will walk you through the process of becoming familiar with the Adobe Illustrator workspace. It's designed for people who don't have any experience or very limited experience with Adobe Illustrator and are interested in enhancing their skills and getting to know the, the application a bit better. Um, what we're looking at right now here on the screen is uh, Adobe Illustrator freshly opened. Uh, just to get familiar with where things are, over here on the left we have uh, our toolbar contains selection tools, drawing tools, and, and many other different types of tools uh, to make illustrations and drawings and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, along the top here is our menu uh, items which uh, provide a lot of functionality and uh, operations that we can perform on different types of illustrations. Uh, and over here on the right is a little strip of icons as well. Uh, these are our panels and right now they're minimized. To expand them and make them more functional, we can click the two little arrows over here and there you go. And right now they're empty uh, because we don't really have anything going here in the main workspace. What we want to do next is create a new file to work with. Uh, think of it as pulling out a fresh sheet of paper so that we can start drawing on. Uh, to do that, it's quite simple. We just go to File, New, and for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to go with the defaults. Um, just click OK here. The settings are pretty standard. Uh, they'll work for this particular exercise and we can always uh, explore in further tutorials what the details are in here. Just click OK and basically boom we've got a nice fresh sheet of paper that we can doodle on and our control panels, uh, our little panel palettes over here on the right uh, have been activated with all sorts of fun features. <clears throat> and one thing that you'll notice as well is that along the top here we now have one additional toolbar that wasn't there before and it provides us with some context sensitive uh, uh, tools and settings that we can apply depending on what we're actually doing at the time. One thing at a time, let's uh, look at our, our, our workspace once again. Toolbars on the left, panels on the right, our menu at the top, and over here is our uh, context sensitive control bar. Um, Let's start with some basic shapes, uh, squares, circles. Adobe Illustrator uh, is designed to work with um, vector artwork, which is different from something like Photoshop, which uses more of a, a pixely bitmap approach, and paint brushes and stuff. This is a bit more <clears throat> mathematical and um, illustrative. So let's start with the basic shapes. Um, if you look here on the toolbar, on the left, uh, you'll see this little box that you can click on. And if you hold down the mouse, you'll see that you get a little sub panel that opens up underneath it. And it's designed that way to group together tools and functions that are very similar or uh, related. Uh, otherwise, you would have an overwhelming amount of icons in that toolbar. It would be a little difficult to work with. Uh, and you'll notice there are quite a few of them. Uh, any icon that has that little triangle in the bottom right means that if you click and hold down, for example, the pencil tool here, uh, you'll get the little sub menu that opens up with other tools that are very similar. Um, if we choose uh, our um, box tool here, the square shape, rectangle tool, sorry, we have it selected now and if we return to our artboard you'll see that we have our little cursor which is a little cross with a dot in the middle we can now click and drag and by doing that we're pulling out basic shapes um, this isn't unlike a lot of other applications that you may be familiar with Microsoft Word or PowerPoint I mean these shapes uh, and the way they work are pretty universal in that sense so that you should have at least some familiarity. If not, I encourage you to just, you know, play around, um, experiment, just drawing these shapes. Uh, 
You can try, try all sorts of different types. If you want to specifically draw a perfect square, for example, though, uh, press hold down the shift key and then click and then just draw out your shape and it'll always be a perfect square no matter where you move your mouse. And then let go of your mouse, let go of the shift key, and there's your shape. You'll also notice now that um, <clears throat> There's a blue outline around this one, but all the other ones have that gray outline. And if I move my mouse over them, the outline turns blue. Uh, Illustrator is giving me some hints that if I click here, I can activate that particular shape. Uh, more importantly, I can click on the selection tool here in the toolbar and click to activate or select any one of these shapes. Once they're drawn, um, you can use them, uh, you can move them around, you can uh, overlap them. Each uh, one of these boxes is an independent shape, so you don't have to worry about uh, you know, blending them in or mixing them up or anything. Uh, and you'll notice that if you move them near each other or over each other over each other like this um, there's a certain arrangement and ordering from back to front and uh, that's because it's the order in which they were created the first one always ends up at the bottom and the stack starts getting built upwards so the last last item that we built is probably at the top of the stack if we were to look at this stack sideways it would look like a big sandwich where each square is another piece of that uh, you know uh, tasty sandwich we're building. Um, a bit of color would be nice I guess we can choose any one of these shapes by clicking it so make sure you have the selection tool selected and click on any one of these shapes here's a good one. Um, two things you need to remember down here these are two little swatches of color one is solid one has um, is more of an outline the solid one is for your fill color and the other one would be for your stroke. So every object in Illustrator can be assigned um, a, a color that will fill the shape completely. For example here I can go to my panel here on the right and just say okay let's make this a nice dark red. Uh, that's the fill color. Now if I want a nice outline around this of a different color I would have to make sure that I activate the stroke swatch over here and uh, choose a new color. So we can maybe choose something in the blues, which we can barely see. And that's why it's very useful to be able to zoom in and see a lot more detail. Zooming in is really easy. If you use your keyboard, you can press Control and Plus to zoom in. But if you zoom in and the, sh the area you want to focus on goes off screen, uh, you can hold down the mouse, uh, sorry, the space bar. And you see when you hold it down, it turns into that little white Michael Jackson glove. You can just click your mouse and drag your artwork. Let go and click again, drag again. So clicking and dragging allows you to move around your sheet of paper when you're zoomed in real close. Um, you can let go of the space bar and it goes back to the uh, regular selection tool and now you can see a bit more clearly what's going on here. If we choose again um, making sure the stroke swatch is selected, choose a different color, maybe something in the lime greens, you can see some subtle changes um, but what's really distracting us is that because this object is selected, we get that thin blue selection highlight. If you click anywhere off the shape, you'll get a much clearer vision of what exactly is going on. The disadvantage here, though, is you can't just go back and try a different color because you need to select the shape first, otherwise Illustrator doesn't know what to do. So go back, let's choose something in the maybe yellows, uh, click off the shape, you can see it again. 
this is nice, but maybe a little weak. If we want to thicken up that strokes, it's a bit more prominent. Um, let's choose maybe a different color. And we want to thicken it up. Here in the panels, we're just going to scroll down to what's called the stroke panel. It's set to 1. We're going to crank it up a bit, maybe 2, 3, 4. And you'll see every time you raise that number, the stroke gets thicker. Um, and uh, reflects the value that you have in that field. You don't have to use the arrow keys, you can literally just type in a number that you want, so 10 and enter. And uh, if you don't like that, maybe 5. Um, you can even put decimal points in here, I believe. Let's see, 5.5. .5. Yeah. So you can get pretty precise and pretty granular with, with the, the uh, exact size and, and look that you're trying to accomplish. Again, uh, if you want to change the fill color, click the swatch for fill, choose a different color from your spectrum here, and off you go. Um, if you create new shapes now, they'll all have that predefined color scheme. Um, you can choose any one of these boxes at any point. You see that I'm using my mouse to scroll here to go up and down my document. Or don't forget, you can always hold the space bar and move around. And control minus on your keyboard will zoom you out. So there you go. These are very important fundamental skills to have. The, the panning around your document by holding the space bar and, and you're using your mouse and the zooming in and zooming out by pressing Control plus and Control minus respectively. If you don't remember anything else from this tutorial, at least uh, walk away with that. That's probably the most useful stuff. Uh, going back to our toolbar over here, one last round. Uh, we'll look at maybe some other shapes. The Ellipse tool allows you to create circular elliptical shapes. Holding down the Shift key that allows you to draw perfect circles. And you can see that the ordering is very important. So if you lose one of your shapes behind another shape, you kind of have to move it out of the way because it's hidden behind it. Grab it, move it over there. Uh, if ever you're stuck with a shape that's completely behind another shape and you don't want to ruin your design, but you want to select the other shape, uh, if you look here on the panel, <clears throat> there's one called Layers. And I'm just going to click this tab here and show you that you can actually grab it and move it off the panel into a more convenient location if you want. And what we're looking at here is our artboard, which is layer one. And if we click this little arrow to expand, it'll show us all the shapes that are in our document and the order in which they're in. So for example, this circle is, is indicated by this little um, blue square that this is the selected uh, piece of art and if I choose this other circle to the left the little indicator will change to that one. Now what's cool about this is if I want this circle to come above the other circle, right now it's hidden behind it, I can literally click and just drag it above and you can see you can place it anywhere in the stack to change the order and let's bring it to the top of that stack and when I let go there it is now it's on top of the other circle behind it it's a lot like uh, ordering and a lot of other applications like Word or, or PowerPoint where you can bring stuff to front send to back and uh, if you right click um, a lot of those commands are available as well. So you can click Arrange, Send to Back, Send Forward, etc. Um, that pretty much covers a really basic glance and overview at Adobe Illustrator. Don't be shy to explore, don't be shy to experiment. Uh, I'll have additional tutorials done, uh, hopefully soon, which will uh, expand on what we've picked up today. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't be shy to leave some comments. Thanks for tuning in and look forward to more tutorials that will uh, get your skills in Illustrator up very, very soon. Thanks.